So it is time for the town hall. Now, I don't know what I expected this to be, but it was, certainly was not what we got. I, mean, I guess I, it, they did a town hall meeting, so I don't know why I was expecting something different, but it's Tony and uh, Dasha Gonzalez, Tony Shivani and Dasha Gonzalez hosting. They're the, 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 the main central table. They bring out the inner circle, except for Jake Hager, who was preparing for his fight, which I guess was the same night in real life, wasn't it? <laughs> so, and they bring out him tonight. It was tonight, okay. He won a split decision, everybody. He is still undefeated in MMA. Congratulations, Jake. So they bring out MJF and Wardlow. And what I thought was going to happen was Tony would like facilitate a conversation between these two sides, like a negotiation or a debate. But yeah, I thought it town... would be the inner circle and MJF, yeah. and that's yeah. it. But it's not, that is not what a town hall is to their credit. A town hall is where the people ask questions of candidates. So the people in this case started with a dinosaur, Luchasaurus, who again reminds us all he has a master's degree. And his question for MJF is, how can you contribute to the financial compensation and prosperity of the inner circle? And I right away from the get-go, I love that all these acts, baby faces, heels, singles, tag, men, women, they all do have... They, they ask questions like they had stake in the game of whether or not MJF joins this crew. What the hell does Luchasaurus care if MJF's in this inner circle? I don't know, but he acted like he did. It was on his mind. Oh, so, by the way, Vinny, yes. even even producer Jared here has noted, lifting weights was invented in Egyptian and Greek times. There were dumbbells in the West in America during the Billy the Kid era. All right. Thank you, thank you producer Jared. I apologize to all the cowboy bodybuilders and Billy the Kid. I can't believe you you gave us false information about weightlifting. Well, as it turns out, Brian, it's a subject I know very little about. By the way, turn the goddamn light on. I was going to do this for AEW anyway. Yep. Halloween Havoc is over. It's true. All right. Oh, God. Okay. Now we're all blinded. <laughs> yes. Everyone watching on their iPad in their bed just fucking sitting, went blind. I've been sitting in the dark for 40 minutes. Uh, okay. Um, so Luchasaurus' question, Luchasaurus's question is, how can you contribute to the financial compensation and prosperity of the inner circle? So MJF presents a chart. And part of the joke is MJF or his crew or his PowerPoint toadies or whatever, they don't know how charts work. <laughs> Because there's one chart showing the MJ uh, uh, Inner Circle's financial uh, status present day, and then one showing it's like pre MJF and post MJF, which makes sense, but they're overlapping. So they're like in, there's two alternate timelines going on at the same time now. But the point is, without MJF, they're doing okay. There's some ups and downs, peaks and valleys, and with the MJF, it's like Cameron Grimes is going to the moon straight up. And people boo, and MGF shouts at them, it's math! So Britt Baker has a question. Sounds like we had the same math teacher. May have, actually. Rebel tries to ask the question, but it gets all schoolgirly with uh, Chris Jericho and his smile and can't get past that. So Britt Baker asks the question, points out, MGF has a terrible track record of friendships in AEW. And Jericho says, that's a very good point. I'm aware of MGF's track record, but I'm also aware that I'm not a dipshit like Cody. And I don't know what went on. It probably just went long, but Jericho's answer was heavily edited. So Jericho threatens that if MJF does turn his back on the inner circle like he has so many friends in the past, they'll kick his teeth down his throat. MJF promises he would never turn on them, points out what they can do together, which is what all of us like to do, get make money, win championships. We'll get a whole lot of green and a whole lot of gold. Peter Avalon's question is, can I join the inner circle? Everyone laughs at him, tells him to get out of there. The next question is from Eric B. of Cody, Wyoming. And because I'm watching AEW, somehow I heard this as Cody from Wyoming. And I was expecting Cody Rhodes to show up, but no, it's Eric Bischoff. And he has three questions. Mr. Friedman, what, what can you do for the inner circle? And Friedman has a one-word powerful answer, as he puts it, Friendship. And then Merrick asks, well, what can they do for you? And Maxwell says, well, I'm a, I am the total package, but I still have room to improve. I may not be the best team player. Once I join these great men, I can learn how to be. Bischoff's third question, he points out that he's known Jericho for a long time, and Jericho has been a prima donna. Jericho freaks out. Shivani tells Jericho to shut up. Bischoff implies MJF is also a prima donna. What is the guarantee the two of you don't end up just killing each other? 
MGF starts to rant about what an unfair question this is, but Jericho says, it's a good question. How do we know you won't stab us in the back? And now MJF is tired of this whole dog and pony show. He's pissed off. For weeks, he says, I've done everything right. I have given you presents. I have given you great TV. I have given you friendship. Last week, I gave you the best segment of your career. What else did I do to join the inner circle? What haven't I done? And Jericho says, you haven't beat me. But I'm going to give you a chance. At full gear, it's MJF versus Chris Jericho one-on-one. If you win, I'll allow you in the inner circle. Sammy Guevara and Ortiz are not happy when Chris breaks this news. MJF warns Jericho that this is the opportunity of his life. He will do anything he has to do to win. Ortiz cuts him off, says, you got no shot to get in with us. Next week, it's me and Sammy versus you and Ward, though. We don't want you in the group. Jericho's on the fence. Santana's on the fence. But we're going to take you on. You'd best believe you're not going to make it to this pay-per-view. I wrote a lot about this one, too, obviously. But, uh... This is very good. It was very fun. Jericho was awesome. M- uh, MJF was awesome. Bischoff was awesome. Ortiz was awesome. It all makes sense. The individuals of the inner circle are individuals. They're not a hive mind. Some guys like MJF and what he can do. Some guys don't trust him, don't want him in there. And they're not. They're, they're just going to settle it, uh, work it all out. So this is very, very good. I thought it was a little wacky at the beginning, bordering on being too wacky. I mean, you've got a town hall meeting, and it's it's two heels deciding if they're going to join forces so that they can ruin the company or whatever, or just destroy everybody. And, like, the first question's from a baby face who's asking about the financial. I was like, what the fuck's going on here? It was a little too wacky, but by the end, I thought this was fantastic. My favorite thing, which actually was during the wacky part, was... When Bischoff starts talking about how, well, you know, Chris Jericho can be a prima donna. Jericho's outraged. Whoa, wait a second. I'm a prima donna? And Tony Schiavone goes, it's Eric Bischoff's time to speak. And Jericho says, well, hold on a second. He called me a prima donna. If you guys watched any of the debates, which based on the numbers, I'm sure most all of you did. These fuckers talking all over each other. Your time is up, and they just keep going for another hour. All of America, probably all of the world, was just waiting for one of these moderators to do what Tony Schiavone did, which was say, Would you shut up? Fucking place went crazy when Tony screamed that. I died. So anyway, at the end, when they finally did all of their back and forth and announcing the match, and, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, we saw last week that, judging from the dance number... I mean, MJF wants to be in the inner circle, and Jericho wants him in the inner circle. But at the end of the day, they're both egomaniacs. And Jericho notes, you've never beaten me. And so they're going to have the match. And they're going to have a match, by the way. And the inner circle is going to be out there, and some of them do not want MJF in the match. They don't want him in the inner circle. So there's so many ways that this could go. The one way I don't think it's going to go is the whole inner circle screws Jericho at the pay-per-view and MJF is in and Jericho's out. I just feel like it's way too early for that. But pretty much anything else, I think, is fair game. So we'll see how it goes. If you're a big fan of these video clips here on YouTube, you're missing out on full-length shows. Down there on the bottom right-hand side of the screen, click that Join button, and when you sign up, you'll have full access to all of the shows that we've got up on YouTube, over 300 at current count. Wrestling Observer Live, The Brian and Vinny Show, and Figure Four Daily with Filthy Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. Hit the join button, sign up today. You can also click subscribe, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows and clips are available.